There we go. We are live, y'all. And we are live. Welcome to the new Sports Scrutiny Live. We are introducing some good topics today. We got some, some guys that's going to be joining us. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, fellas. Hey, you doing, Mike? What's up, everybody? <laughs> Man, that's Liam. That's Liam and that's uh, Liam and uh, Brad. Yeah, they're going to be joining us. Uh, you know, doing some things going on. Anyway, 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 we're going to dive into some topics, y'all. So apparently the big talk right now that's going on is Nico Montano is supposedly scared of Valentina yeah, Shevchenko. Uh, you know, doing I'm some gonna, things going on. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I'm going to let y'all talk. Y'all go ahead. Topics, y'all, so. <laughs> oh. I'm going I'm to introduce my that- point later. Valentina should be the champion of that division, point blank. I mean, <laughs> her resume speaks for itself. Well, th- this is the Two. thing for me. This is the thing for me. Like, this is my point. I'm almost gonna lay my point out there. Okay. Because Brad, Brad seen us in a Brad seen me in a discussion earlier on on, on Facebook. Um, to me, this is what I think. I think yeah, Valentina is worthy. Valentina Shevchenko is definitely a worthy opponent. But the problem I have with me is no matter what you've done in this weight class, that shouldn't translate to this weight class. And that's yeah, I'm with BJ big... on this. I'm with BJ on this 100%. Go ahead. Go ahead, Liam. Go ahead, Liam. Go ahead. Well, I think, to be honest, if you want to be champion of the division, you know, you've got to have a couple of fights in that division. You need to clear out the roster. That's what I always talk about. You know, they talk about clearing out the roster, mate. So if yep. she wants to be. You know, the kingpin division, undisputed, best flyweight champion. She's going to take some people out first. She can't just rock up and be like, boom, title shot, you know? She's the, right. you know, go away to the top like everyone else. I mean, it's different I'm... if you're talking champion to champion super fight, you know? Like McGregor right. when he came up and he fought Alvarez. That's different. He's the champion of the division. He's champ- challenging the division above him. Right. But Valentina isn't the champion. So I reckon she needs to work her way back up before she takes that. You know, takes that fight. She's coming off of a loss. I mean, well, she's not coming off a loss. She beat... Uh, no, no. She beat that undefeated Brazilian girl that came in from... Uh, she came in from Invicta. Priscilla. Remember, remember, there was a little bit of controversy that they were saying that Valentino was just beating that girl so bad that the ref should have stopped the fight. Like, right. she only had she only had one fight in this division, but... And you guys, you guys bring up very strong points. I guess I'm looking at it from a perspective that I've seen Valentina be successful in the UFC, and yeah, Nico was impressive in the show. She was impressive, um, definitely on that show. But she only got the title through that show. If if Nico had started as a free agent, let's just say. Without the show, she wouldn't be champion, right? There's still, there's still some, there's still some other good contenders in that division. But when you think of Valentina, look at the opponents that that she's that she's fought. You know, two close losses to Nunes in a division that probably wasn't her division to begin with. Like this hundred, what what is this? One hundred and fifteen pound division. One hundred and twenty five. 125. It's different over here. So it's kilos. Was... I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so what is that in kilos, Liam? I'll say like 65 kilos, and you'll be like, well, what the fuck is going on, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So you, you're thinking the same when we say pounds, right? Yeah, well, I'll just kind of sit there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just trust you, man. I well, just got to trust you, you know? Yeah, okay. I got you. My my point being is that Valentina, we've seen her successful against high level competition. We all know if Valentina was on that show, she wins that show hands down. She she's she's been the Muay Thai champion for years. She's fought all the highest competition for years. So for me, I guess I'm looking at it from an experience standpoint. I I really feel like it's just really a matter of time. But you guys bring up great points. Definitely about Nico and that Valentina. Maybe one more fight should mm. give her the title fight, but that division isn't that deep. So the UFC is looking to make a star really quick. That's what it that's, looks like. 
And like that's the point I was trying to make. Like I was on a podcast. Shout out to Coach Shelton Harrison. He just uh he just commented in the live chat. I was actually on his podcast last night, uh, chiming in on what he was talking. He was talking about this same topic. And he actually, uh, Coach, you pulled an Ariel Hawani on me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, put, he pulled an Ariel Hawani on me. And next thing I know, Valentina Shevchenko's manager was on the phone, was on the live chat. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and he, wow. heard it, he heard everything that was being said. But like I said, I still stick to what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Even though Valentina did what she done in Venom. Right. That's in Bantamweight, though. You know what I'm saying? I understand some points that was brought up about, you know, this this division not being, like, established. Like, it's really not, like, an established division. Like, the girls are there, but they're not, like, like the rankings aren't, like, solid rankings. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just believe... We haven't seen them fight too much. There hasn't been many fights in that division, period. Not, not enough activity going on right now. Right. So right. what I'm saying... So what I'm saying is maybe she should have had another – she should have had at least one more fight before she got a shot right at the title. She's not saying she's not worthy. She's worthy, but – I totally agree. I totally agree. Well, let's be honest, boys. This is going to be a good fight. I think this is going to be a very good fight, this thing. I don't know. This is either going to go – because, I mean, this girl, um, Nico, she's had, isn't she just come off – she's come off an injury? Isn't she come off yeah. an injury or something? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So she hasn't been injury. in the, the cage for a bit. Yeah, not since the show or since the finale. Yeah. So, like, this could be very interesting. We haven't seen a fight in a couple of years, man. I mean, is it years or months? I'm not sure exactly how long the injury was. It's been a, it's okay. been a few months. Let me, let yeah, me ask you guys this. If, if Nico just kind of think, think of Valentina's performances. We've seen, we've seen mm. a couple of Nikos, but just think this for a second. How does Nico beat Valentina Shevchenko? Based off of the weaknesses we we think we know about her, she really hasn't shown any holes in her game. Her two losses were to the champion, and they were razor close losses. Every other fight, she's dominated. You Reggie, know what I'm the so, what's up, Reggie? What's up, man? Man, a live chat's rolling. What's up, Reggie? Man, no, were shout you out asking, to Reggie. Were you asking me that, Brad? What do you guys think? What do you got? What, what do you guys think? Like, kind of take a second and think. All right, if Nico does beat Valentina, how how does Nico beat Valentina? Is it by submission, knockout? Well, I think first. Based on what you've seen of Nico, how would that translate against somebody like Valentina coming down? Personally, a right, division. This, this is MMA. This is one of the most explosive sports in the world today. This is like you could the guy could be winning the entire fight for five rounds, and the last twenty seconds, guy hits him with a left hook, knocked out. You know, right. think about um, what's it called? Yeah. Anderson Silva, Chris Weidman, their um, their fight when uh, exactly. Anderson Silva was Anderson destroying was him. He was never get Anderson Silva never getting rocked. He was just he was just the king. He was undefeated, and he's mucking around too much, and boom, next minute, new champion. You know, this is the kind of thing that could happen because. There's always that one chance, you know, that one, one in a million kind of that one in a million kind of hit. There's always that. I mean, that's 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 like that's kind of a general statement, you know. That's that's a normal thing to say, but that would be that if that happens in this fight, that would that would be. That would be those are fights always the it best. It would be epic. Those upsets, those underdogs. It would be one of the great something crazy, you know. Yep, you're we'll absolutely see. right. Well said. Well said, Liam. Those girls, four ounce gloves, and yeah, all it does. Unperfectly placed punch mm. and could put Valentina out. But Nunez higher than the and one time. Say that one more time, bro. Your phone was going Valentina. Out. Say that one more time. And in Nunez, right? She's ahead of these smaller girls, and Valentina is the common opponent now. So she fought her twice, and not one time did Valentina. Okay. And she's a much bigger girl than Nico. And I'm sharper than Nico. I'm just, it's just, mm. well, to that me, would be one of the greatest upsets of all time if Nico, I think Valentina wins she by submission. This is this is the thing with me. This is how I see 
it happening. And that's for me in the past week or so, ever since this has been like, ever since this topic has been like, boom, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been going right. back looking at some footage, even some of Nico's fights outside of, of the UFC. And I got two the points. Yeah. My, my first point Good. is, my first point is Nico will take she she'll fight anywhere. Like if you want to stand and strike with Nico, she'll stand and strike. If you want to go to the ground with Nico, she'll go to the ground with you. But to me, like I see Valentina being more technical. You know what I'm saying? Of course, because her striking mm. is very very technical. Like Valentina, world class, world class striking, yeah, world class striking. But at, sometimes you can see like the Rose Namajunas and Joanna Young Jacek fight. The second one, you you can be as technical as you want to be. Joanna Young Jacek is probably more technical than Valentina Shevchenko. I mean, that's a that's mm. an arguable point. Ooh, Valentina holds two wins over Joanna in Muay Thai. Exactly, but that's an arguable point. I don't know if she's more technical. <laughs> <laughs> so that already happened, and Valentina won both of them. But you see, but, <laughs> but you see how she's Rose, the bigger girl. Valentina's the bigger girl. You, well, did out, you know Rose? Did you know Rose and Valentina trained together? They yes, trained together on a fight. Yeah, I knew that. But what? But what I was saying was, it's possible for somebody. Nico's not on the same caliber yeah. level striker as Valentina. Not even close. But, but Nico, she can get lucky. Nico mm. throws with a lot of power. She throws with a lot of power. You know what I'm she saying? Does. And she could stand and trade and bang with Valentina, and she can catch Valentina. She won't be scared. No, I she know won't she won't. She's got that kind of warrior mentality, Nico. I don't know if you guys remember her little her little background story on on the show, but it was actually really she come from that Indian tribe, and uh, uh, them. She's got you know a little circle, and she fought her ass off on that show. Yes, she. she did. Definitely did. She has my respect for sure. Absolutely. I, w I will say that. It's not like I'm hating on or anything. You know, I'm just sometimes you're right. You can't go with experience and, you know, MMA adds up. That is very true. Right. So that's why what you and Liam bring up is, is perfect sense because MMA math never adds up. One girl beats one girl, another girl beats the other, and then the mm. other. MMA triangle does. It's what like you, a, what you the, say? All the all the Tony Wait. Ferguson fights, you know, it's like he always looks yeah. like he's like, you know, he's he's there, but he's kind of losing, and then, boof, one guy gets knocked out, the other gets submitted, you know, it's just you have no idea what's going on. It's the same yep. kind of thing, but like Tony Ferguson, yep. obviously, he he plans that, but like, that's just a yep. sport, man, like. Yep. You have no idea what's going on. You think, oh, this is a, this is this guy's get destroyed every round, and then the next minute you're just like, what the fuck just well, happened, yeah. bro? You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna out of nowhere. We're gonna check boys, out. The by the way, boy, the way, boys. I swear a bit. Is that allowed on here? Because I've sworn I think twice. Now. <laughs> is that allowed? I'm just double checking. You're good, bro. In Australia, you swear a lot, but like, I'm just double ahead, checking. Man. You know? You know what I mean? Hey, you good, bro? Go ahead. It's all Go good. Ahead, make your point, Liam. Hey. Make your point. Yeah. Go ahead. You yeah. Good point. Oh, no, it's all right. good, man. I'm not going to swear anymore. Don't worry about it. You keep going. <laughs> 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 live chat, the live chat is rolling. So, Coach Shelton Harrison says, Nico is flat-footed and not agile. True. That's very Boom. true. Well That's said. True. That's true. She, she, she's, she's, kind of, she's kind of like a bulldozer. Like, she just charges towards you. Like, she did that in the fight with Roxanne Montefiore. She just kind of charged toward Roxanne and just kind of like bulldozed it. And her striking was not that bad, to be honest. Uh, he says, dude, J uh, Joanna Young Jacek is not more technical. I did say that that was arguable. That was an arguable point. I didn't. You say caught that. yourself, BJ. Yeah. Especially after you heard Valentina beat her twice already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. But, I mean, what I'm saying is Nico could, could pull off. We've seen bigger upsets than Nico We've seen, you know, we've seen yeah, bigger ups. We have. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, Sarah, him. George, St. Pierre, one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's the first one that comes to mind. Which Jesus. one? Jesus. Matt, Matt, Sarah versus GSP, one. Oh, Ooh. my God. 
if, if that wasn't the upset of a lifetime, like Matt Sarah on the verge of retiring, just comes out of nowhere and upsets George St. Pierre. Yeah, that was wild. The Chris Wyman Anderson Silva. The Chris Wyman. Yeah, was, was, was yeah that that's up there. For me, this one is going to be a little bit of a personal because BJ is one of my favorite fighters of all time. For me, BJ Penn, Frankie Edgar won. Massive upset. BJ was lightweight champion for so long, destroying everybody, and then Frankie yeah. came out of nowhere. Yeah. Wasn't taken down in six years before Frankie took him down finally in that fight. Six years. Six years, not yeah. taken down in a fight. That's crazy. Yeah, but bro, Frankie goes hard. Frankie's and, the next and, level. Like, there's fights I've watched well, him he's getting knocked out. He's like rolling away, getting back up. Yeah. Punch, man. Gray that Maynard. Guy doesn't, he doesn't Gray give Maynard. Up, man. Yeah. Yeah, the Gray Maynard fight was never crazy. goes away. But they're saying possibly that uh, that Frankie Edgar can get the uh, Ortega and Holloway. How's this? I think he looked against him. Did you guys see that fight? Say that one more time. Yeah, I didn't hear it either. Uh, did, okay, what did, what did you guys think of Frankie's last performance against Cub Swanson? Oh, that was great. That was great. Mm. That was that was wonderful. If you ask me, yeah, man, what, it, there's a lot of hype behind Cub Swanson right now, and it's, it took it took a veteran like Frankie Edgar to to beat his ass. Derail the hub train. Yeah, exactly. To show him what yeah. some real competition was like, because Frank Frankie Edgar is a veteran. He's older. But Frankie Edgar is still Frankie Edgar. Well, remember the second time that they fought. It's the first time Frankie Frankie mm. choked him out in the third round. Yeah. How old are these two? They're both, they're both older in the sport. How old are they actually? Do we know? Frankie? Yeah. How old are these guys? Because, I mean, we're talking about the veterans of the sport and they're Frank, old for the division. Frankie, right? yeah. Frankie's 35 and Cub is 34. Yeah, see, that's not. I mean, I mean, we can say it's old for the division, but I mean, Romero's running around at age forty doing stuff, and no one's saying he's old for the division. Bro. Yeah, you but know what I mean? Joel well, Romero is a is a once in a lifetime human being, my friend. <laughs> that oh, guy, yeah. no, I'm not saying that. There's he's not too many of those guys walking <laughs> around. <laughs> he's a freak for sure. He's the definition. Of, you if you want to look any at him. If you want to look like any UFC athlete or any athlete in general, you want to look like Yoel Romero. That guy. Woodley butt. Woodley butt. Yeah. So I was about Woodley, to say, Woodley, yeah, Woodley is too. But I think you guys watch like a show of Woodley and Yoel Romero. And Romero maybe six years younger than Romero. And Romero mm. is – dude, I met that guy in real life. The uh, – Orlando. He has to be one of the biggest human beings I have ever seen. And I've <laughs> the like, likes I've met the likes of George St. Pierre and Brock Lesnar. You guys saw Nick Diaz, oh, Donald yeah. Cerrone, Boss Rutten. So I've, I've met a couple of these guys, even Big Ben Rothwell. Yoel has to be the, the biggest human being ever. And when I say biggest, not tallest, not fattest, just shredded. Like, you could see his through his suit. Like, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Just didn't make any sense. Bro, Imagine. Nick Diaz in that picture. Yeah. Nick, Diaz was, Nick Diaz was huge, man. Like, I didn't expect that. Like, he fights at, what did he fight? Welterweight, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He's like, him and Welterweight. Yeah. He goes him and his brother. Actually. Oh, same height and weight. They're pretty much identical. It's crazy. Yeah. I think but Nate like, is a little bit taller. But it wasn't even his, his body. He was like kind of like normal. But like his 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 yeah. head just looks like a, his head looks like he could like literally <laughs> he he could break through a wall with that, bro. Oh, he yeah. could just if he yep. got angry enough, he just run up brick wall. He's no a more, big man. dude. No brick, He's a big dude. Bro. I'm only I'm five eight, about seventy pounds, and he's. Probably about six, uh, kind of the size difference there. We looked like two different weight classes. One, yeah. he was walking around like 196, he said, right there. And we looked like two different weight classes. So let now me, I'm okay. shredded nowhere near like him, but. 
Mm. So, so feeding off of that, what do y'all think about his return to the UFC? Because they're talking about it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Because the birthday night, Nate is coming back. Yeah. Nate is probably going to fight Woodley. Because mm. that fight will be in August. They said Dana mm-hmm. said it's not going to happen. Dana said it's not going to happen, but the Tyron and um, Nick are saying it's going to happen. No, Nate is saying it's going to happen, but uh, Dana is saying there's no contract. We haven't been notified or something. I read that last night, pretty sure. Well, Nick, yeah, yeah. That is, yeah, I did read that too. But you know how it goes, man. They know yeah. how big of a draw <laughs> he is. They're, oh, they're yeah. gonna, they'll change their tune right away when he calls up. Well, so well Dana Nick, said something yeah. crazy, but didn't he said uh, Woodley – He's not going to give him a fight for a, 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 after the Demi Meyer fight. He said he's so he's like he's not going to give him a fight for a, a while or something like that. About Woodley. Well, he's still yeah. healing from an injury. Woodley. Yeah, I forget. I th- I believe he's. There shoulder. you go. Yeah. yeah. His shoulder. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So what do y'all think yep. about? Uh, but that fight would be in August. Hmm. Dan Hardy. Dan Hardy said he would come back for a fight with Nick Diaz. Man, Nick Diaz would. Yep. Nick Diaz would smoke Dan Hardy, BJ. You think he, he would? would smoke him? He would yeah. smoke him like a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. No, I, I think he would, man, because those Diaz brothers are like, man, those, they're like a different animal. Their, their box Sorry, is ridiculous. It's so is this- it's ridiculous. Let me what ask y'all. Oh, no. brothers boxing. We're just talking about Dan Hardy saying he would come back and fight uh, Nick Diaz. Well, let me ask y'all this question. Um, back to uh, Tyron Woodley and, and Nate Diaz. Mm. How do y'all think somebody like Nate Diaz stacks up to – what would he do to beat Tyron Woodley? Because this – I mean, Tyron Woodley has way more power than, than, than somebody like Nate can handle. Right. Like, right. You know, it's, a little, it's a little different when you move up. To somebody, you know, move up in weight and to fight somebody like Tyron Woodley. I mean, I mean, Nate's jujitsu, his jujitsu is, is is on point, but I mean, Tyron Woodley neutralizes jujitsu. Look what he done to Damian Maya. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, Nate Diaz, man. Nate Diaz, if, if he goes in the fight, bro, Nate Diaz, triangle choke, two middle fingers in the air. That's all I want to see it, bro. <laughs> like Nate Diaz style. That, bro, that guy, man. He's a he's a fucking I'll, legend, bro. He's a cute. I'll, 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 I want to ask you guys. Remember Roy McDonald versus Tyron Woodley? Oh yes. Mm. Remember that fight? Yeah. Oh yes. Roy McDonald won that fight by fighting at range. Right. Roy goes about six two. Yeah. Mm. He, he kept Woodley with the whole fight, and he you know he he was tagging him. He didn't significantly, but he kept Woodley at bay and, and actually won that fight, mm. right? Yeah, he did. So, Nate has that go-forward style, you know, that boxing, where it just it wears on you. And, and Nate is a pretty big – he'll be a pretty big welterweight. Yeah. That's you know, he was pretty big even when Connor fought him too, you know? Yeah, and Connor's like, big when Connor's he fought s- supposed to be the same I think he's supposed to be the same height and the same reach as Woodley. I'm pretty sure I, last time I checked, the, the same same height, same reach. But does so, Nate Diaz, Nate Diaz have the power to make Tyron Woodley respect him? He could box Woodley up. Right. He Nate doesn't Diaz need to knock him out. Nate Diaz doesn't need the power. Yeah, exactly. Nate Diaz is just Nate Diaz, bro. Those kids are cardio kings. Yeah, and yeah. The tire out. Those big muscles, you got to feed those big Yeah, yeah you're right. And Nate Diaz is all the mental game, bro. Those those fighters go into the fight, and they just don't know what the hell's going on when they fight Nate Diaz, bro. Yeah. Like that Donald yeah. Cerrone fight. He's just, he's just in the middle of the ring, it, cussing him out in the middle of the ring, bro. And Don, Donald Cerrone's just kind of there, and he's just like, what the hell is going on, bro? Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, remember. And the way he, he knocked Donald Cerrone's hat yeah, off, like, like to get to that. Like, he, he's, he's won the fight before he goes in, that guy, man. Yep. It's like, I think uh, fighter. Yeah, bro. He was definitely thinking like that when he went in there with Connor, because mm. at first time, man, he, 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 I mean, I think he beat Connor both times, but I mean, but Nate Diaz is, he's, he's worthy of the, he's worthy of the title shot, I think. 
You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, it'll be a big fight. For- but once again, that's my thing. I was just saying about Nico. I mean, about Valentina doing the same thing. Maybe he should have a couple of fights. You know what I'm saying? So he can get used to fighting the world. But, okay, so look, you the Eubanks girl, right? Sajara. So that was the one that was supposed to be in the finale, right? Right. Hmm. That girl, first of all, we were talking about this earlier on Facebook, BJ. That mm-hmm. that girl was unprofessional. She had her chance. When you you're when you're after the title, bro, there's no excuses. There's no you're going for a world title, you have to be on point. Every single one of those other girls were on point to fight for the title. She didn't. So she disqualified herself. Right? Then they still tried to actually a lot of people don't know, but they try to give that fight to Eubanks before Valentina. Valentina's second option. Eubanks was the original option. They were going to try to make that fight happen because that's what was supposed to be. So Valentina step Eubanks is injured. So first it was and she's not ready. Valentina is more than ready to fight for the title, you know? So a lot of people have it at in a point of view where they think, all right, yeah, Valentina's just walking in this thing, but she really wasn't even the first option. Right. Mm. Yeah. Well, what do you think about and, what is okay? So and I'm, so was, I made the point earlier uh, that in, in the group that we was talking about on Facebook, uh, I made the point that, you know, I named two names. I named... Uh, Montana De La Rosa and I named Caitlin Chikuki. And what do you think about that? You see their rankings, BJ? Yeah, I see that. Oh, I see their rankings. I see their rankings. They're both ranked outside of the top 10, brother. Okay, exactly. That's my point. That's my Valentina's point. Valentina's ranked number one. It, yeah, because they put her at number one after beating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put her. But McGregor went up after throwing a trolley through a window, bro. <laughs> 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 like, I don't know about those rankings, man. They're, 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 they're I don't know who is doing those rankings, bro. That, that, that was I'm just saying, day. if we're guys, if we're following the ranking system, those those girls, with all due respect, PJ, good good fighters, but they they are not they are not worthy to share the octagon with Valentina. Those, that would be uh, such easy work. Well, that would be such easy work for that girl. We got we got to keep for real second guys. When I, I, those those I, I, two girls that you named are pretty good, but watch out. You know, Valentina's gonna make that fight look so easy, and you guys will have a newfound respect for Valentina. Do, so do you guys remember when she fought Juliana Pena? Do you guys remember that fight? Juliana Pena is a beast, and Valentina. Handled that girl like it was nothing. And this girl, Pena, hasn't been back since the Valentina fight. She got pregnant. That's crazy. Yeah, she got (laughs) pregnant, but she also got... Valentina also took her arm that led her to go get pregnant. (laughs) She had time to think about that broken arm. She couldn't fight, so she was like, I don't know if that led to that. I don't know about that. I don't know if she got a broken arm. She's getting pregnant. I don't know about that logic. I'm sure... I'm well, sure she had some time to think about it, Liam. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> With that injury that Valentina provided for her. But I'm just saying, Valentina. I was surprised that Valentina was able to outgrapple somebody to the caliber of Juliana. Right. Pena. In my opinion, right. in my opinion, like I see when I think Valentina Shevchenko, I think striker, like Joanna Young Jacek. Right. Like when you think, yeah, when you think, yeah, about her down game. Right, but I think, but I know that going into that fight, I said, to, in my personal opinion, I think Juliana Pena is probably the best grappler since Misha Tate in that division. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. I would say that's up there. I would say that's up there. And she handled Juliana Pena on the feet and on the ground. Hmm. The, the only place. The only place I seen Valentina. I mean, the only place I seen Juliana Pena in that fight have any success. Was up against the cage with the knees. Yeah, she was throwing, she was throwing hella uh, knees, but that was it. I was shocked, bro. I was I Valentina. Was yeah, yeah, then right. Valentina threw that beautiful hip throw and then got it to the ground. Armbar, 
Fight over. Hey, boys, 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 boys. Um, ahead, I don't go. mean to do this, but um, what happened is, right, right so, mate, um, I got a doctor's appointment at 10 and 15. Oh, it's 8 Liam. o'clock. It's 8 <laughs> o'clock. I'm going to have to speed over there right now, man. Oh, I, so, we forgot about that. We forgot about that. During a bushfire, bro, so, like... I'm after no business. Yeah, you got a game plan. We'll see I, see, goes, hey? I, I, I see you on edge over there, Liam. Hey? I said, I see you on edge there, brother. Yeah, no worries. Get, be safe. Yeah, yeah I will, bro. Don't worry. Safe, hey, bro. I'll see, see you later, eh? All right, bro. We'll, one. Keep all right, we'll talk to you later. See you, man. Goodbye from Australia. Oh, we'll, yes. We'll do another one. Yeah, no worries, man. See Aussie, you. Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> all right, bro. But uh, Brad, we got a couple more minutes. We'll stay on, uh, man. But um, what what were we talking about? I lost my train of thought. Yeah, we got a little uh sidestep there. I think we were talking about Pena. Yeah. yeah. So I'm. Yeah, there you go. But you you know, if 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 yeah, Nico is gonna have to watch out for Valentino on the ground, man. I mean, that's just everywhere, that. BJ. Everywhere. Yeah, have to watch out for. She's gonna have to step up. I, I mean. You know what the tree on the top is, What's BJ? That? Why I also have to take Valentina. It's kind of a silly reason, but this girl's got a handgun tattooed to the side of her body, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah, that's a dope tattoo, man. That's a dope tattoo. She's and do, have you seen her on uh, Instagram firing all these machine guns and it? Bro, she's an assassin, bro. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, she absolutely. lives it. She loves guns. She loves guns. And her oh. sister. Yeah, I was just. Her sister's about- a badass too. Was- yeah, you brought it up. <laughs> I was about to say, what do you think about Valentina and Antonina being in the same weight division? Now, I talked with her manager last night on the other podcast, and her manager said that he doesn't. He said that that's more like a uh, "we'll cross that bridge when we get to it" type thing. Because mm-hmm. if Valent if if Valentina gets past Nico. Nick, you know, even though Valentina will probably be Nico's toughest fight, she's still gonna have tough fights to fight because those girls are there to fight. You know what I'm saying? You got, sure. you got, sure. Alexis, you got Alexis Davis, Liz Carmouche, uh, you know, you got Jessica. So Jara, you bang when she gets her things together, she's definitely a threat. She's super explosive. You got Sajara Eubank. She's the biggest threat. Yeah, she's a big threat. You got Barb Honchak, the former uh Invicta champion. Or Invicta champ, right? She Barb, she's so old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry to say it like that. Her time has <laughs> just passed, man. She she has a name because she's a former champion. I get it. But once they start building up these the younger uh prospects that they have, yeah. She'll get phased out. You get and uh Barb is is a solid fighter though. You have you're you're giving her, her her respects. So I get it. So real quick, we're gonna touch on uh we're gonna touch on real quick for the last five minutes. We're gonna touch on Holly yep. Megan. We got a full women, we got a full 224 breakdown coming to y'all in the next week. So be on the lookout for that, yes. y'all. Uh we have a UFC 224 breakdown is coming y'all way. So you have to check that out because we're gonna dive all into it. This right here is just a just a taste of what you're gonna get. You know what I'm saying? But it is <laughs> <laughs> it, is what it is. It is what it is. I hate Liam had to go, but it is what it is. Anyways, yeah, he Megan had to beat that brush fire. Oh yeah, <laughs> Megan and Holly and and what's going on in this in this uh, new tough season with fly, with featherweights. I'm gonna let you start. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting because uh, you know Megan. This is gonna be obviously her toughest opponent to date. You know, so. Kind of going along what I was, you know, telling you guys why I think Valentino will be so dominant. Just thinking back, and I've and I've seen some of Megan's fights, and she's a very dominant fighter, you know. But Holly Holm, we know she's been there, she's done that, you know. Maybe another one of the biggest upsets in UFC history when she knocked um, Ronda Rousey's head into the Australian crowd in Liam's hometown over there. Shout out, Liam. Her head, her head landed in Liam's front yard. He just didn't know who it was. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. But you know, you know what I'm saying. We we know 
what Holland is about. Egan, yes, we, you know, for the hardcores like me and yourself, BJ, we've seen her fight in other organizations. We know what she's about, you know. Um, and she can, again, definitely be a threat. But Holly is just so accomplished. She's coming from that Greg Jackson's camp. And you know they're always going to have her. And they have her pretty much in the right right position to succeed. And for me, that's just, again, what, what stands out. But Megan is definitely a huge threat. Yeah, she is. Uh, and that's the point I was going to make, you know, I catch a lot of flack for uh, for being a Megan Anderson fan. I do, man. Like in 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 my circle of He's MMA people that I talk to, I catch a lot of I catch a lot of flack for being a Nico Montano fan. I caught a lot of flack for being a Misha Tate fan. I'm catching a lot of flack for being a Mackenzie Dern fan, and now I'm catching that's flack. For being my girl, right there. And and now I'm catching a lot of flack for being a Megan Anderson fan. But I, I, I yeah. I think Megan is what the UFC needs for the featherweight division. Megan, along with a few other ones like Pam, Pamela Sorensen, um, you know, uh, 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 even Cindy Dandewa, um, What am I thinking? Who am I thinking? Even Charmaine Tweet. She old, but Charmaine Tweet. Leah Letson. One name. Yeah, you know. Yeah, those, those girls are all solid. Right. But, sure. And you but, still got Yana out there. Yana. Yana hasn't said that she. Like that one guy was trying to call you out, like you said, Yana was gonna, you know, not be in that division anymore. But she didn't say she wasn't going to drop that. Yeah, she didn't say, you Still know, part of that division. She didn't say I wouldn't fight at one forty-five again. I mean, Yana could right. be thrown. You can throw Yana Kuniskaya into that boat, and Yana would win. Some oh of yeah, them. Yana would win some of those oh, fights. Oh, for sure. Absolutely, She's a very talented fighter. Absolutely. But Megan is what that division needs. Like Cyborg needs, and that'll be. That'll be a huge draw, especially if, yep. if if Megan is able to get past Holly Holm, which I think she can. Uh, Megan, that, it makes that fight even bigger for Cyborg and Megan, for sure. Right, because Megan is a legit contender. Like, people talk about Megan. Oh, she's slow. She don't move ahead. True. She's been working on it. Those are the people that haven't seen her fight. Exactly. So what I'm saying is Megan – can propose she can pose a threat in that division. She can pose a threat to Cyborg too. That's what that's my point. Yep. Yep. I, I 100% agree with you on that. Jay. Well said. Well said. <clears throat> so that that fight is going to be interesting. But mm -hmm. Megan can definitely pull the upset on Holly for sure. Holly, Holly. Sometimes she kind of uh, I don't know if lets her guard down is the right word. You know what I'm saying? It almost feels that way because in a lot of her losses, besides maybe the cyborg fight, you know, Misha Tate, the Misha Tate fight comes to mind. And, and uh, who was the other girl she lost to? Oh, Durandamy. Oh, yeah. You know, um, come to mind, like Holly was winning those fights. And then she just, like Misha finished her late in the fight. And then uh, Durandamy came on strong late in their fight, which, you know, a lot of people argue Holly won that fight. But, they gave that to Duran and me yeah. by split decision, and that was for the inaugural 145-pound title, but now she doesn't want to fight Cyborg because Cyborg's on steroids. She don't want no smoke. She didn't want that smoke, man. But a lot, <laughs> a lot, of, people say, a lot of people say that Jermaine Duran would have posed, especially with her Muay Thai, that Jermaine Duran would have posed a threat, and I believe she would have. Yeah, that's why I'm so surprised she doesn't want that fight. Yeah, exactly. Me too, man. Me too. I said the same thing. I don't understand why Jermaine wouldn't fight because Jermaine would have been like that because Jermaine's Muay Thai is top level. You oh, know? I mean, is ridiculous. And Cyborg's a not, beast. Uh, Cyborg's not a fan of the ground. I mean, she almost got a choke locked in by Yana. You know, so Cyborg's definitely not too much of a fan on the ground, even though she is a black belt or whatever belt. I think she's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But, um, Misha just was Misha was too smart and too agile for Holly. Like Holly can't really yep. fight. She's very tactical in that fight. Holly has to fight a dumb fighter to win. Like Betch Kohea, dumb fighter. Uh, Ron, <laughs> Ronda Rousey. We found out, yeah, dumb fighter. You know, we and, found and, out real quick about Ron. And I, and I would say, except for like you know Marion Reynaud and Raquel Pennington, you know they they kind of just kind of ran into Holly. They're like, good fighters. Ran, yeah, they're good fighters. Absolutely, one hundred percent. But I was getting the title shot to Nunes. 
Yeah, yeah. One more time. Um, Raquel's getting the title shot. Yeah, Raquel so, deserves it. I mean, she deserves it. She's been banging it out for a while. And Renault, Renault's got a big fight coming up too. Cat Zingano, that's gonna be interesting. Boom! Yeah. Cat Zingano. Now I think, man, I'm telling you, Cat Zingano lost to Ketlin Vieira, but that was, I think that that was the best thing that could have happened to Cat though. Cat needed that loss. Yep. Cat needed that loss. She had a long layoff before that fight. Yeah, bro. And that I think that loss is gonna spark that old Cat Zingano back. You know what I'm saying? Like Cat's gonna, I think. I don't know, man. I don't know what's gonna happen with that because Marion Rainot just had a hell of a comeback against Sarah McMahon. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was great. <laughs> he came back on McMahon. I was like, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah those, but, those girls fight with so much technicality, man. They're so good. Man, we got a lot of stuff coming up, guys. I'm telling you. I hate Liam's not here. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot. No, we can yeah. We'll we'll uh we'll have our pre-fight breakdown and we'll have our our post-fight breakdown. So Absolutely. yeah, we'll continue. We got to get a hold of Chris, man. What's going on with Chris? Yeah, we gotta get we gotta get Chris in here, guys. You guys will love Chris. Um, but yeah. uh, we we got a lot of stuff coming your way, guys. If you if you want to know what's going on with these fights, tune in. We got four. We're gonna we're gonna have four different guys and four different opinions. So you got you guys got to make sure you hear. We're gonna break down the main card, guys. Absolutely, absolutely. We're gonna check out. I know Brad's got some stuff to do. I got some stuff to do, and it's late. Uh, but we will be back to you guys quicker than you think. All right, guys. Have a good night. All right, we are BJ, out. BJ, be easy, my brother. Yes, sir. All right. Oh.